Hi everyone. My husband thought you might like to have a little peruse at our shop, so there's a little bit of a bird's eye view. Um, today I'm going to be showing you the Burnett Rome 3. Um, Burnett range is absolutely brilliant, um, and I'm just going to show you the basics um, of this machine. Seeing as I can't always get to you ladies, I just thought it would be a nice thing to do. So with the new machines, you'll notice that a lot of the thread spools are lying down like this. So when you're buying thread, make sure you buy good quality thread. That is the biggest thing that I'll tell you about the new machines. Um, don't use overlocking thread or grandma's thread that might be rotten. Good quality thread is really, really important to get a perfect stitch. So the Metrocene, Guterman, Madeira, any of those brands are absolutely brilliant, which are what we sell. And um, with, the, with the Burnettes, you get your little um, thread holders, which just go on beside your thread like this. Now your bobbins for this machine, it's important to use the correct bobbin and you get your little bobbins with the machine and you can certainly buy extra little bobbins and this is your bobbin winder. Now I get a lot of phone calls when someone's brought a new machine and they'll knock the bobbin winder and they'll put the foot down and they'll hear that noise and they'll ring me up and think they're blowing up their machine. You haven't. You just need to knock your bobbin winder back in the position to put a bobbin on or turn it off because you've knocked it by mistake. So the bobbin actually goes on and pushes down. You can hear a little click. And to wind the bobbin, you're going to follow these broken arrows on your machine. So the bobbin thread goes behind here. It goes here in front of the little tension unit, right around in a circle and in front of that little arm. So I'll show you that again. So it just goes there, right round, and in front of that little arm again. And that will hold your thread at the right tension. Then you can either thread it up through the little hole there, but 90% of us will just hold the thread and wind it around, and then pop it across. Now it's going to wind your thread nice and evenly for you. You can stop at any stage if you want a small amount of thread, or you can carry on winding it. Okay? When you're finished, Simply push your bobbin winder across, cut your thread, and lift your bobbin off, okay? Now to thread your machine, no matter what machine you've got, always make sure that your needle's at the highest position and that you have your foot lifted up. Now when the foot's lifted up, these little tension units in here are open, so when you thread your machine, they will go in the correct tension unit. So you go here, straight down, around, follow the solid arrows this time, up and around, and down behind, just like I've shown before. But on this machine, it's no different. You've got an automatic needle threader, which is wonderful. So you hook it under this little bar, push this down, keep pushing till it is, there's a little wire that goes through your needle. You slide your thread through the little bar. You can feel it click. Let your right hand go and your left hand go. And you're left with this wonderful, wonderful big loop. Okay, I'm going to show you that again. So you're going to hook it under the bar. You're going to push this down. You're going to slide this in and you can actually feel it click in. Let your right hand and your left hand go and you're left with a wonderful loop. And you've threaded your needle. So if you can't do it, the only reason possibly is your needle is down a little bit low. So if your needle's down too low, it can't go in the eye. So make sure that you have this at the highest position here, your take-up lever, and it will go in nice and easily. Now I'm going to show you how to do the bobbin. So the bobbin case system in here is absolutely brilliant and nice and easy. So you take this, I'll take the bobbin out obviously. So here's your bobbin case, and here's your thread. You want to have the thread coming off the top of the roll. Pop it in to here. You go into the little slot, which you can see quite clearly. Roll your thread around until it clicks. And when you pull the thread, it's going to go clockwise. Okay, so I'll just show you that again. So here's your bobbin case. You're going to go into here, you're going to go into there, come around and click it, and it goes clockwise. 
Now I just want to show you this bobbin system in here because you do need to know how to pull it apart. So there's two little arms holding everything together. So just push the little arms away and this will all fall out and you'll just have a coronary because you'll think, oh my gosh, what's happened? Wriggle this out. Now this is all the workings inside your machine. So if your machine gets a little bit noisy, you just put one drop of oil and this is the place where you put it, okay? And then lift this up and you can see in there that's like a half moon and this is the other half moon. So they just sit, sit in beside each other, like that. And you can see this has got little indents, so you know that is the correct way to go. And there's a little piece at the bottom and a cut out here to line up. So all you do is sit this in. A little bit hard to show you with my hands on the road. But you can see it's all clicked in in the right place. And then these little arms will hold it in place. Okay, just like that. So to put your bobbin in, you simply hold your bobbin case opening here. I always tilt my machine back and then it can go in. I'll show you without holding that so you can see. So just wind it around till you can see where it fits and push it in. And that's all you need to do. It's very, very simple. Now, once you've done that, if you turn with your hand wheel always towards you, one whole rotation you can see that it has caught your thread and it's popped your thread up to the top. Now if that doesn't happen, you've either threaded the top wrong or you've threaded the bottom wrong. I'm going to show you that again. So we're going to put our bobbin case back in and I'll close this so I can show you. It goes there and there. Push it until it clicks and I'm going to leave that open for you to see. I'll get my hand out of the road turn the balance wheel one rotation, turn the balance wheel back up, pull the thread and it comes up to the top and you know you've got everything in correctly. Okay? And then that just goes there and you close the door. Now you've got a wonderful thread cutter. You thread from the front to the back, like that. And the best part about that thread cutter is it will allow your threads not to come undone when you start sewing. Now with the burnettes, with these particular models, this is the Rome 3, when you have opened this up, you have all your extra tools in here, okay? So all your extra bits and pieces that you need are in there. And one thing you may not realise you have is an extra thread stand, which goes into that little hole there. So if you want to do twin needling, or you want to have a stand that stands up, a spool, that's where it goes. Now we'll close that up. And this slides on here so that you have a nice flat bed for sewing. Now with your Rome 3, you've only got three dials here to worry about. This first one is your tension dial. It should be between three and five. Good quality thread, you shouldn't have to change it from four, so don't touch that one. This one here will change your zigzag width. So any of these stitches up here and down here, if you want a wider stitch width, you change that one. And this one here changes your stitch length. So a standard stitch length for a sewing machine is on two. However, if you don't want to do any of these top stitches and you want to do these red stitches, which are the triple stitches, you roll this past all the way past zero, push it a little bit further until it S appears. Now what that's going to do is going to shut all these stitches off from the top and allow you to use the bottom stitches. But first off we're just going to do ordinary straight sewing so we're going to do two and a half stitch length. Now this little picture window here is showing you what stitch you use. So this is your balance wheel to move your needle up and down, the top one, and the bottom one moves your stitch selection. So when you wind this, it will select your stitches, whether they be um, blue or red. Now I have had some customers turn their stitch dial part way and not fully click it, and their machine only sews backwards. So if that happens to you, just move the stitch dial and make sure you've clicked it into place, because if it goes halfway, it will sew backwards. Okay, you may be able to see it, but you can feel a really good click. 
Okay, now, so when you are ready to sew, you've got your foot and it lifts up and down on the inside, not at the back, on the inside. But some people accidentally knock their foot off. So if I put this under here, there's a little lever here. If I go sideways, if you accidentally knock that, your foot comes off. And some people are a bit concerned about how it goes back. Now you can see on the foot that it has a little bar. Oh, is that good? You can see that. It has a little bar across the top. Right? So that lines up with your foot. And you just simply put your foot down. And when it's lined in the right position, it will pick it up. So I'll show you that again. It drops off. Right? Bring it over. Line it back up. And if it's in the wrong place, it won't pick it up. But if it's in the right place, it will pick it up. Okay? So that's how you put your feet on and off, no matter what foot you've got. So when you're ready to sew, you've got no width because you're doing straight stitching number two. And you have your two and a half length. Now the only other thing you need to know about is your reverse button. So here's your foot going and here's your reverse button. So you need to physically hold that down to go in reverse. It won't do it just by tapping it. So if I sew down, I need to hold it down to go into reverse. Okay? Now if I want to do a longer stitch length, I just lengthen this dial and it will do a longer stitch length. Lift your foot up, lift your work out, and cut from front to back, and the thread will hold. Now, if I want to go onto my zigzag stitch, I simply turn my dial, and it's stitch number three, and the number on here will line up with my dial that I can see here. So I need to put on a width, so I'm just going to go three width and two length, and now I will get a three width zigzag. So again, reverse, and I can length, uh, widen this out while I'm sewing, I won't break a needle, and I can narrow it down while I'm sewing. Okay? So that's your width and your length dial. Very, very important. So those are the two things you need to know to select all these stitches. If you have a look on here, you do have some very pretty stitches that are satin stitch. So if I want to sew one of these stitches, I'll go to number 10, and I want it on satin stitch. Satin stitch means you go nearly to zero. So when it says to go quite close to zero, you do go quite close to zero. And I normally like to sew this stitch on four, and nearly zero, and number 10. So what it's going to do is a very tight satin stitch. It's very, very pretty. And you can see these machines have a lot of weight on the table. They don't bounce around. They're very, very good to sew on, nice and solid. Now, if the needle stops down, only pull your balance wheel towards you. Roll it always towards you to lift your needle up, and it will loosen your thread underneath. So you can see it's a beautiful, beautiful stitch. So they've got some very, very nice stitches. Now if I want to go onto the red stitches I was telling you about, these triple stitches, you roll this and when you get to here you think it can't go any further, but give it a really good push until you see the letter S appear. Okay, so if I go back to, oh I'll leave it on the stitch if you like, um, everything is done on forward. Make sure your needle is up before you select another stitch. So I'm going to go on to this one, which is double overlock. So instead of a single overlocker, it does a straight stitch here, a straight stitch there, and a zigzag, and it's called double overlock. Nice and strong. And if I want to do the triple zigzag, I go right back to stitch number three. It does a beautiful triple zigzag. And the only time I would touch my width dial for these stitches would be to straight stitch on stitch number two, which is triple straight stitch. So I'll show you that. Turn my balance wheel to loosen my tension. And this is triple straight stitch. Triple straight stitch, that's it. Make sure I haven't touched the wrong button. So zero, S, and stitch number three. 
stitch number one, thank you pardon. Number two, goodness me, stitch number two. And there's triple straight stitch. So they're very, very, very nice stitches. So triple zigzag, you can see it does three stitches in the same area. Triple straight stitch, three stitches. Very, very good when you want to sew around an armhole um, and you want a stronger stitch around the crutch of trousers, especially children's um, jeans and things like that, it's nice and strong. Now, the one thing people do get a little bit stuck on, and that is when they're putting on the fancy feet, like this one is for freehand quilting, and it's a little bit different because you don't clip this foot on. You have to physically take off this shaft here. So you get this little screwdriver that's in your kit, and you undo the screw and you actually take off that whole shaft. So if I show you that, that's what it looks like and that's what connects to here to form your foot. But we need to take that off because we want to put this foot here which is a darning foot. So what you do is once you've unscrewed that, see your, your needle bar here, I've just taken my thread up, that doesn't matter, here's your needle bar, I've moved it so that when this comes across and round the back the actual foot is going to go over the needle bar and it's got a spring action. So I need to really push it. See how it's got a spring action? I need to really push that flat before I screw it up to get it on my machine. Whoops, let's not break the needle, Robin. Should we try that again? Screw that around and then tighten it. Hopefully I haven't just bent my needle. That's what you don't do. I like to show you what you don't do. Then tighten this little screw up. Once you've got it nice and tight, give it an extra little push because you want that knot to move. So I'm going to go right around, keep going, oh I really did unscrew it quite a long way didn't I, that's alright, keep going till it's nice and tight. A bigger screwdriver would be quite handy but this one's certainly quite good. And I can see what I'm doing. Oh, there it is. Okay, so come right around. I think we're there. I'll just double check that it's nice and tight. There we are. So see how I'm doing it extra, extra tight. Just like that. Now, what you do need to do is take off this. And these are your feed dogs that make your machine so You want to drop those down because... To use this foot, you're going to do freehand stitching. So I'm just going to re-thread my machine because I accidentally unthreaded it. So down, around, up and down. Go in behind that little arm. There and up oh, and behind the little arm that I didn't get. And then under here, click it, slide it in. And you can certainly tell if I'd bent my needle because I wouldn't have been able to thread it. Slide this back on. I don't have any wadding beside me, so I'm just going to show you on a piece of fabric. So what I've done is I've dropped my feed dogs down. I've put on my darning foot. And now I'm going to make sure it's on ordinary sewing. Zero. The stitch length will make no difference. And I'm going to put my foot down. Now I turn my balance wheel one rotation and I pop my thread up from the base, have both your threads out to the side, and you want to just sew in one place to start off with. So this is the stitch you do if you are quilting. Cut your threads. Now what happens is, when you start stitching, you're going to make the length of your stitch by how fast you move the fabric. So I am just going to sew at a nice steady pace and move my hands nice and evenly. It's kind of unusual without wadding but it's good to show you so you can see it nice and clearly. And you can sew backwards, sideways, forwards, across, you can sew any way you like. And that's the joys of a darning foot. So it's a lot of fun but it's just a little bit different to put on than an ordinary foot. So I thought I must show you that foot. Okay, so that's called your darning foot or your quilting foot. So when you're finished with that, lift your foot up, 
take your thread out, turn your balance wheel to loosen the tension, click it from front to back, and then you're going to unscrew that screw that you've done up. So turning it away from you, and you keep doing it, oh see it does need to be undone quite a bit to get the foot on and off, until the foot wriggles off. Now what I do also is I put my needle bar down a little bit because it helps get it on and off. So it's a really, really neat foot, but with the spring action, you do need to take a little bit of time to put it on and off. Okay, just hook it around the bar. There we go, and there's my foot. So that is your quilting foot or your darning foot. Now the other foot you ladies might have is um, a walking foot and there's different styles of walking feet so what I would use for do for a walking foot I would put my feed dogs back up now what a walking foot does is it feeds your top and bottom layers of your fabric evenly so if you're sewing curtains or you're sewing um, velvets or you're sewing your quilt together and you've got a few layers this is when you'd use a walking foot or you're sewing anything difficult so with this foot this little arm needs to go over your needle bar so if I can show you like that I hope you can see that that goes over your needle bar I'm going to lift my foot up and this time <laughs> I get it around the right way this time I'm going to hook it over the bar and up like that so you can see this needle bar I'll just show you before I screw it up has got the little arm going over it so it must go over that bar and then with this particular foot it's just going to push up and screw so if it doesn't go up you need to undo your screw a bit more which I do and you're usually only using straight sewing with this particular foot so you don't have to do you're not doing anything difficult you're just straight stitching it so push that up <laughs> got bleepings going on and all sorts today and then just push that up okay once you've got it up high enough tighten your screw so it needs to be um, it doesn't get tightened as much just nice so that it's not going to um, fall off Make sure you've got your feed dogs up and they are up before you start sewing. So these are the feed dogs here. And now when you sew your difficult fabrics, it's going to make it so much easier. So when you're doing this on your straight stitching, I would always put my stitch length out to three. So I can sew over quite a few layers and I'll get nice even stitching and it will feed my fabric as well. So it's designed for your quilting and you can see how the foot walks see how it feeds and walks so it's walking the bottom and the top layer nice and evenly now what that means is when you have two bits of fabric and you start at one end when you get to the other end they're going to be nice and even so it's a brilliant brilliant foot but it's also really good for going over thickness the one thing you can't do which people don't realize as a walking foot is designed to feed forward so you can't go doing forwards and reverse feeding stitches so it's just for going straight ahead okay so it's a very 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 good foot and remember turn your balance wheel one click and it will release that tension and you've got a nice even stitch and it's perfect front and back so a walking foot is a wonderful, wonderful tool and it's usually an added extra with these machines and as well as the darning foot. Alright, so there's just a few little things to show you about this machine because um, they are a very reasonable price, they're a brilliant machine, very, very good quality and nice and easy to use. So I hope you've enjoyed learning about the Rome 3.